And I wonder, you know, what if we did give every political leader ayahuasca or, you know, somehow every world leader did <laughs> an iboga or at least took a few hits of acid? You know, is this, do you think the medicines want this? And is this the answer for the state of the world? And well, the, the, the funny thing is that that's kind of happening. Oh yeah, that is true. You know, but the thing is, I mean, like, I know for a fact, I know people who have served the medicine. Like, I know for a fact that like, you know, sitting congressmen and U.S. senators and governors have taken, you know, ayahuasca and other yes. medicines. That is but, true. You, know, you have like this, this transcendent experience, you know, you, you but it's just like anybody else. Then you like go back into your office in the U.S. Capitol. You know, you go back into your Senate subcommittee. Like, what are you going to do? It's the same as anybody has this, this, this issue of integrating it when you've discovered something that is so far outside conventional reality. Like, how do you bring that in? What do you like? It could very well be. I don't think, I mean, I know this isn't true, but it could very well be could very well happen that every single member of the US government and the power elite all have a psychedelic journey at the same time. And three days later, they all go back to the office and nothing changes. Because like we tend to, to think that the way that the world is is because of the poor choices of the people in positions of power. But to a large extent, almost a total extent, the choices of the people in power are dictated by the culture and the institutions that they are in, which is why as soon as they start making other choices, they are removed mm -hmm. uh, through all kinds of institutional mechanisms. It's like the, the old story, the world uh, the, that, that we've inherited has an immune system that will eject any person, any viral particle that is not maintaining the interests, maintaining that particular body. So, yeah, I mean, this opens up, and, and this is one of the, okay. I've been looking a lot at the unconscious patterns, solution templates, and beliefs that even when people have had a profound awakening experience, they still default to. Because I've actually been, so one of those, just to name it before I go on, one of those is um, the pattern of appeal to authority. Hmm. Like if only we could change the mind of the president, if only we could change the mind of the billionaires, if only, like that kind of giveaway of our sovereignty and our agency and our power even if it's just like a mental construct that, that change originates uh, or is held primarily by the same people that our received worldview and causality assigns power to. But maybe those people are not actually powerful. They don't actually feel that powerful. Maybe the people who are actually powerful are totally invisible to the lens of power, you know, as a social construct. Like maybe, maybe it's the people who are, um, you know, doing shamanic work in faraway places on Earth, or who are um, guiding lost souls that have died in war into the next world, and they're spending all their time doing that. Nobody knows about those. Like the, the world does not work the way that we have been taught in a force-based scientific reductionist materialist cosmology. That's not how things work. So anyway, that's one of the unconscious patterns. And I think that psychedelics have the potential to reveal those patterns. But you go back to the office and they set in again. And that means we need like psychedelics by themselves are not going to, like you put it into the water supply. I mean, I think it's a pretty fun idea, you know, like, yeah, I would go for that. But, you know, it's not necessarily going to have the effect that Timothy Leary and those guys hoped. Uh, everyone can just go right back to normal because there are other kinds of medicines that are equally necessary. Other, other powers, other agents of transformation that do not come in a chemical form or a plant form. And 
that, for example, um, would be the the role of of a teacher or a guide or um, you know somebody who's helping you integrate. But it's really a community because when you enter temporarily a different reality, and then the medicine fades, you can't stay in that reality by yourself usually. You can try, you can stay there for a while, you can do practices, you know, you can listen to your transcript, you can do all, if you made it, you know, like there's all kinds of ways, but really when, when the reality that you've been shown is so different, so disjoint from the surrounding expectations that you're immersed in, the surrounding belief systems, the assumptions, like these unconscious patternings, you can't hold it. I like to say that sanity is a group project. We need a community. Um, and this is, I think, the next development in psychedelics. It's the development of psychedelic community. It's already arising. People sit in the same circle, you know, every month, for example. Uh, th but this is what's necessary to hold the ground that we are able to visit with psychedelics. And, um, you know, the thing, I mean, I really, okay, so I'm gonna out myself here, um, but I'm probably pissed people off, but it's probably too late to You've stop. You've done that so. before. <laughs> yeah, like I was really, and without being judgmental about it, okay, I was, I felt like really disappointed and dismayed during the time of COVID when such a huge portion of the psychedelic community defaulted into lockstep with an orthodoxy promulgated by the very institutions that had been persecuting them for the last 40 years. And I'm like, hold on, like, didn't, don't you take seriously the direct experiences you have that show you that, for example, the science isn't all that there is, that the authorities are not of integrity, like, like have these medicines have been of any use whatsoever? If so many of us, when push comes to shove, we're falling into lockstep with a, you know, the mass formation and the totalitarian agenda and so on and so forth. Like it really threw me for a loop. Uh, and, and I guess that's one of the things that, you know, and maybe other people, maybe people listening to this are like, yeah, I think the same thing, but it's about you, Charles. You know, you've done all these psychedelics. Why were you not able to see your own blindness and your own reflexive defiance of authority when in this case, authority was right? And you were so wedded to your uh, beliefs in alternative medicine and so forth that you were willing to let people die, uh, grannies die in nursing homes so that you could keep being right. Like that people have that view of me, you know? So I'm not like, you know, all, all I can say is probably this sense of dismay is shared uh, widely beyond people who have my own set of opinions as a COVID dissident. Um, but I think what it's showing us, whatever side you fall on in that particular divide, and it is a profound divide that is morphing now into other configurations, but it's the same divide. You know, whether it's about, you know, whatever, woke ideology or um, gun control, you know, or abortion or whatever. Uh, and by the way, if somebody thinks that like, I have the conservative view on all of these things, please don't categorize me like that, you know? But but that's the, that kind of thinking. Okay, which, which side is he on? Yeah. That is the divide, yeah. that habit. That's another one of the meta patterns that has to change if anything is gonna change. That habit, which side is he on? Like, let's apply that filter first. And if he's on my side, then I'll listen to him. If he's in the in-group, then I will listen to him. Now, how do I tell if he's in the in-group? Is he using the right code words? Is he displaying his pronouns? You know, is he, is he mentioning certain things, like certain keywords that say, yeah, I'm in your club? Like that way of orienting, very ancient. I wrote, I wrote a lot about this during COVID. Uh, that's the kind of thing that, that 
um, psychedelics can expose that and expose like the personal wounds and and that are behind it, you know, the wound of self-rejection, the wound of abandonment and so forth, mm -hmm. the traumas. Um, but also those of us who become aware of these can act ourselves as medicines mm -hmm. by um, helping others to see. And, and, you know, it's not like you can, helping others to see doesn't necessarily mean explaining it because people get really defensive, but it really means standing in the frequency of non-judgment, mm -hmm. standing in the frequency of um, holism, standing in the frequency of forgiveness, of, um, of honesty, self-honesty. Like those kind of things can also get transmitted because really the goal of the medicines is to forge us into medicines. Mm 